special horses don't come along too often. They are few and far between. But Classic Legend may well be one of them. A winner of three of his four starts, his only defeat being full of merit, Classic Legend has the world as his oyster. But first, he has business to attend to in Sydney, at Randwick in particular, in the $14 million The Tab Everest on Saturday, October 19. Classic Legend was handpicked by Carmel Size to join the stable of trainer Les Bridge. Size has always backed her judgment when it comes to thoroughbreds, and she is adamant the ultimate reward may well lie in the shape of Classic Legend. Part of the privilege of being with a good horse is to make sure that he's 100% all the time. Well, I saw him at the Classic sale and I, um, I just couldn't keep away from him. I, I would have inspected him, would have driven to real stud people mad. Would have looked at him about 20 times just to go back and keep double checking that he's the horse that I thought he was. I was always going to buy him. Um, I thought I got away with it quite cheaply, <laughs> in, in fact. Um, I'd already given him a stable name before I bought him and he's just had immense presence. There was something and I had a connection with him. I know that sounds um, strange to other people that buy horses but there was something that drew, drew me to that horse. And every time I went to see him, he'd come to the door, every time I had him out, he's just a great walker, great nature. He's the type of horse that, you know, the, the type of horse that I go to sell to buy. Oh, he's always a lovely horse. I loved him as a yearling when Carmel bought him. We had a look at him. And, uh, yeah, he always said something about him. I took him up to Hawkesbury for a trial. And Kieran McEvoy said, I'll go and ride him. I nearly fell over. Classic legend charges away late, and that's a soft win. Uh, I cried when he won his Barry trial. He's an unusual horse in the, in the fact that I've never had a horse that's been so popular to go to the races his first, his first run. Everybody wanted to see him run. He's got a big stride on him, Classic Legend, and he just towers over Got Your Six, pounced on the lead, and draws clear. This is a nice debut. Classic Legend's roaring away to beat Got Your Six. And I was just so relieved that he did what I thought he could do. And then he came out, his second start, and he just franked his form. And the boom three-year-old in the Les Bridgeyard is set for another massive win here today. This is Annihilation going up against the older horses. Wins it by five lengths to level eight. What he did was quite remarkable off the preparation that he had. Just the motor inside of him, I think. When I first hopped on him, I didn't think much of him at all. He was very casual. Um, he just loped around, didn't really do too much. Uh, you had to really get at him to sort of get him to canter. Um, but I think, yeah, he's just got something inside uh, that sort of sets him apart. His will to win is very good as well. You look forward to riding him in the morning, so there's a few there that sort of give you a bit of trouble, but yeah, nothing phases him. He's pretty professional, um, and he was from the get-go. The boss goes about the business as every day. He doesn't try to change too much, and the boss said he's never had a he didn't think he'd train another champion, so for him to say that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, a massive sort of thing. He's just strengthened up terrific. He's a powerhouse of a horse. Classic legend is owned by the Hong Kong-based Bon Ho, an owner that has been associated with size for a number of years. Together, they acquired the vacated GPI racing slot in this year's the Tab Everest, and the dream of winning the world's richest race on turf is now well and truly alive. Classic Legend's owner is an absolute legend himself. He um, came to me about four or five years ago when his um, luck drained out of Hong Kong on my exit with a brief to buy a really nice horse. And um, I was able to buy Southern Legend for him. He's been sensational because he's just backed me the whole way. Before um, the Arrowfield, I was looking for an angle actually to keep the horse in Australia. I did tout 
oh, let's, you know, let's try and get a slot in the Everest, you know, hoping that, um, you know, the lure of the prize money may make Mr Ho think twice about taking the horse to Hong Kong. I was never really serious about it. Um, I know it uh, was a huge way in front of us, but the horse has just progressed so quickly in his first preparation to, to win the Arrowfield the way he did. And then all of a sudden I had people approach me uh, to negotiate on their slots and I started to think it was a very real possibility. I went back and I, I, was, I was looking at the replay of the Arrowfield and thinking, knowing the horse and knowing how he'd come up, I'm thinking, actually, that's not a crazy thought. You know, I'd, maybe it was the type of thing where I just threw the idea out there as a bit of a, you know, oh, why don't we do this as a bit of a million to one dream. And all of a sudden it's become a reality when that slot came up. At the time when I, when I threw it out there, I thought it was a crazy idea, but I don't think it's a crazy idea anymore. Bridge has trained a golden slipper winner in the shape of Sadapa, won a Melbourne Cup with Kensai, and enjoyed great success with his favourite mare, Hot Danish. And he doesn't think classic legend is out of place in being mentioned alongside those stars. What he's shown me has been terrific. And I know Kieran McElroy's got a great opinion and no one's ridden more horses, good horses than he has, and I've trained a lot of good horses. All I know is top class. What he does as well, it's all in the fate of the gods now, but I think he deserves his place in the race. He's got such this lovely laid back disposition. Nothing seems to phase him. Hope I'm as calm as he is on Everest day. While a start in the Tab Everest seemed like a pipe dream when Sires first entertained the idea, she is now hell-bent on enjoying the lead-up to an event that she thinks may well have revolutionised Sydney racing. And the lure of a $14 million purse at Randwick on October 19 has her excited. Well, it's, it's just massive, you know, it's introduced so many young people to racing, you know, we've got so many new people coming in. The concept that Mr Volandis has come, come up with, I think, is probably the best thing that's happened to racing in the last 25 years. And, you know, full kudos to him for putting racing back on the map when we've got um, other sports to contend with. You know, if you ask any person in the street, you know, they may not be interested in horse racing day to day. They are interested in the Everest.